One very useful concept that we're going to use throughout our discussion of state space is the idea of the similarity transform and diagonalization. First, we want to look at what we call matrix equivalence. And this is not matrix equality. Matrix equivalence is defined in the following way. Let's say we had two matrices, B and A. If I can express the matrix B as a function of the product of some matrix Q, who is being inverted, times the matrix A, times some other matrix P, where B is some M by N matrix, and A is some M by N matrix. That would mean that P is an N by N matrix, and Q is M by M. Furthermore, Q and P are non-singular, which means that, one, they have an inverse. So Q inverse and P inverse exist. And this also means that the determinant of Q and the determinant of P do not equal zero, hence non-singular or invertible. If this is the case, we say that B is equivalent to A. We can think of this as a generalized coordinate transform, although we're not quite sure what it would mean for A and B to represent a set of coordinates. This is something we're going to discuss further uh, in class and uh, more as you study dynamics and control. Matrix similarity goes a step further, and it says that let's look at the case where B and A are square. In this case, we would say that A and B are similar if I can write B as the product of the inverse of some matrix P times A times that matrix P. So again, P is non-singular. which means that the determinant of P does not equal zero. And you, you would imagine that for an A and a B, there might be a single unique P that allows this to happen. There might be multiple uh, different uh, values of P that would make this work. And so it would depend on uh, exactly what A and B are. But again, we call this a coordinate system transform away. So A, if A was expressed in one set of coordinates, then B would be expressed in a different set of coordinates. And this matrix P would be the generalized coordinate rotation that would take us from A into B. Again, this concept might not be too, uh, make a lot of sense right now, but it's a very powerful concept that we use when we study dynamics, rotations, and uh, control. Um, you have seen this, this idea before. When you look at the idea of the principal uh, stress strain, coordinate system or the principal uh, inertial coordinates. Remember, the idea here was that you were trying to find a coordinate system where the stress and the strain in, in an element are uh, orthogonal to each other. And in here, in the inertial coordinate frame, say I have a, a cylinder, and I, if I express my coordinate system correctly and I exploit the symmetry in this situation, then the inertia matrix or tensor, the inertia matrix, would then be diagonal. And in this case, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're finding, as opposed to, say, a coordinate system that was rotated all like that, all right, kind of, which was not exploiting the symmetry in this cylinder, that would have an inertia tensor or inertia matrix that would be non-diagonal. If we choose the principal axes, then I'll have a diagonal set. The nice thing about similarity is that if two matrices are similar, then they have they have they share the following properties. So when A is similar to B, then A and B share the following. They share the same rank, they share the same determinant, they share the same trace. They share the same eigenvalues, and they share the same characteristic polynomial. 
Notice they do not share the same eigenvectors. Right, that's a very important point. The, the value of this is that if this, is, if this idea of a similarity transform is a generalized, co generalized coordinate transformation, and we could think of a very specific case here in three dimensions, and if expressing the inertia in one matrix, or sorry, one coordinate system gives you a non-diagonal system, a non-diagonal inertia, and expressing it in another coordinate system gives you a uh, diagonal inertia matrix, but they share the same determinant trace and eigenvalues and whatnot, and this characteristic equation, then it might be easier to work in one coordinate system versus the other. And that's, that's why we use this stress-strain uh, principal coordinate axis as well. So it's really all about finding the coordinate system that will allow us to do the analysis we need to in the most simple way without making things too uh, convoluted or coupled. So let's do a simple example of this. Let's let A equal a matrix 1, 3, 2, and minus 2. I can find P as the matrix which is 0 0.9094 and then 0 0.416 minus 0 0.5658 and 0 0.8216, sorry, 8246. Now you might ask how, and this is something we're going to answer some more in class, but it turns out that these columns are the eigenvectors of A. And when we apply this transformation P, so we take P inverse times A times P, we end up with a diagonal matrix in this case, which is 2.3723, 0, 0, and minus 3.3723, and we call this a B. Well, it turns out the values along here, this 2.3723 and minus 3.3723, are the eigenvalues of A. So A has eigenvalues there with eigenvectors given in P. And notice that B shares the same eigenvalues, but notice that the eigenvectors of A are just 1, 0, and 0, 1. So even though, they, even though A and B share a lot of uh, properties, they do have uh, eigenvectors which are not common. It's actually nice that this is diagonal. Um, this is not always guaranteed to happen, although we can say that there is, for given certain conditions, we will always be able to find a P which not only is the similarity transform between A and B, but also will diagonalize A. Let's look if we can solve this problem about trying to find a matrix P which will always diagonalize a matrix A. In this problem formulation, let's say the following. We have P inverse times A times P is equal to, instead of B, let's use cap lambda, which is formulated by taking lambda 1, lambda 2, dot, 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 to lambda N along the diagonal. And let's assume that P can be written uh, in a form such that its columns are formed as vectors along uh, the width of, of P. So V1, V2, through Vn. And since P is, uh, A is n by n, P is n by n, P inverse is n by n, so I'm going to have n column vectors. Notice we can write this equation up here as A times P is equal to P times cap lambda. And I can write that out as A times V1, V2, dot, 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 times Vn is equal to V1, V2, dot, 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 Vn. And that's all times lambda 1, lambda 2, through lambda n. Now, if I look at what I've got here, I have a system of algebraic equations where I can this is a, a, uh, an n by 1 vector, say v1. This is an n by n matrix. And this is a 1 by 1 scalar times a n by 1 vector. 
So I could write out all these equations separately as say a1, sorry, a v1 equals v times v1 times lambda 1, which is just lambda 1 v1. And I could write all the way through down to a times vn is equal to vn lambda n, which is just lambda n vn. And for any value, say k in here, I can write a times v sub k is equal to lambda k times v k. Well, this is starting to look familiar. If I pull this term to the other side, to the left side, I get a times vk minus lambda k vk is equal to zero. If I factor out the vk, I get a minus identity times lambda k all times vk is equal to zero. Well, if this is a true statement, and we can indeed find this uh, representation or this matrix P which diagonalizes A, then the V sub Ks have to be the eigenvectors. The eigenvectors of A. And these lambda Ks have to be the eigenvalues of A. Well, this of course is just a standard eigenvalue eigenvector problem and we can go ahead and try to solve that. And we can actually do this in MATLAB because MATLAB allows us to not only get the eigenvalues of a matrix, but also to get the matrix which is formed of the, dia the, the columns of which are formed from the eigenvectors of the matrix. And we would input that into MATLAB using P and then say L is equal to eig of A. So in this example, uh, you would get the uh, uh, matrix uh, P and lambda that I had in the previous exa uh, example for that matrix A using this command. 